Hello, this is Mr. Beck. This is part seven in my series on creating a game with an Android. In this uh, tutorial, we're going to create sound. Uh, we'll have collision sounds, sounds when the ship fires a bullet, and we'll have some background music. It's very important to consider what sounds you are using. If you are publishing a free application, you can use a, sounds that are licensed under Creative Commons. Uh, if you're publishing a 99 cent application, you need to make sure it is a Creative Commons uh, license that's you know uh, appropriate for commercial use. We have open source tools in class that we can use to create our own sound effects and music. Um, that works very well. You can also purchase licensing for professionally produced sounds. Um, there are certain places where you can do that for a reasonable rate. I, uh, I like Video Copilot. They have um, a nice pack of professionally produced sounds and sound effects. Um, so anyway, just be sure that uh, when you're using sounds, you you know the licensing there. All right, so here we go. We're going to declare an instance of the content, uh, context class at the top of our main activity here. All right, because we're going to need it. The context class gives us access to all kinds of resources within the application. And there are lots of different places within many applications where you need access to the uh, the context, all right? So it's important that we have that context. And then inside of onCreate, all right, I'm going to go ahead and I'm just going to move down here to a good spot. And you can see I've already done this. You might want to get some of this in right here. I'm going to create, um, I'm going to utilize get application context so that this is not null, OK? And we have an appropriate application context at this point. Also, at the top of main activity, I have declared two media players. In this case, in main activity, I'm using media player, and I'm using media player one. All right, two separate media players. So uh, right underneath where I declare the context, we're going to go ahead and we're going to initialize our media player. And the first one, OK, is going to. Um, loop over and over again. And this is the one that I'm going to use for the music. And uh, we initialize it and uh, we create it like this. And you know, the question is, OK, so we're utilizing a resource called R raw main. Let me show you where that is. Um, that's under res. And I've created a folder now. You can right click and you can create a folder, you know. And however you want to put MP3s, any MP3 that you drop in there that's formatted correctly is going to work, as long as we you know, stick to those standard rules. All lowercase letters tend to work well. Uh, I have three different MP3s, blast.mp3, hit.mp3, main.mp3. And in this case, the looping music is main. See? And I'm also going to uh, initialize my media player one so it is no longer null by calling media player create context um, r.raw.blast. And that's going to be what happens when we actually shoot. OK, so inside of onCreate, it's going to set the media player that's playing the main MP3 to loop. And then it's just going to start it immediately. So when the application starts, we will have music. If we come down to where our onTouch method is, all right, our onTouch event, I am, every time I touch the screen, here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to reset the media player. I'm going to reinitialize it with the MP3, and I'm going to start it. And that blast MP3 is a really short one. Uh, if you want an MP3 that's going to be able to work in rapid succession, you'll have to open up a program like Audacity and chop it so that it's, it's very short. The shorter the MP3, the better results you're going to have here. But every time we touch the screen, then the media player gets reset, loaded, and started. So we'll hear it shoot in that event. So here we are inside of OnTouch event. Right there. Now, there's another issue um, here. At the very top of this, when we start this main sound to loop, it will, if the user decides to hit the home button and throw the application into the background, as many users will do, this media player will continue to play. 
and you will get some nasty emails if you put an application on somebody's phone where the media player fails to tidy itself up when the application closes. So down here at the very bottom of the application, I found a good spot right before the last uh, curly brace here. And we're going to override, all right, the on pause method, which is on pause is basically this is what happens when the user presses the home button. And if we don't override it, you get a certain default behavior. We're going to override the on pause method. We're going to call the default behavior here. And we're also going to say, OK, anytime the user hits the home button, let's go ahead and call media player dot stop so that when the home button is pressed, the music also stops. So you want to get that in at the end of your uh, program. We're going to override on pause. OK, so we've got three things in main activity. We're looping music. We are resetting and triggering a media player every time the screen is touched. And then inside of panel, it's a pretty simple context, a uh, pretty simple, excuse me, concept as well. Inside of panel, I'm going to do the same thing I did here. I'm just going to declare media player here. And this is at the top of the class. Okay. And then inside of our constructor method, all right, I'm going to go ahead and I'm just going to create it. Now you see our constructor method here, we're fortunate, gives us access to a valid context. So we don't have to do anything special. We have access to our main activity context right here. Um, and so I can initialize my media player using that context, and I'm going to initialize it to use the hit.mp3, which is what's going to happen when there's collision. And as you might have guessed, down here at the bottom, if you've been following along, we have our um, distance formula. And at the time, the distance here is triggered. Now I'm going to increase this a little bit just to make my targeting a little bit easier. When the distance is uh, within this range, we're going to go ahead and we're going to make the target disappear. And we are going to invoke our media player. Very simple. So now when a target is hit, we will hear the media player. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to hit play on this. And let's see what we have. I'll generally pause when I fire up an app. There we go, we got some music. Hit it, it shoots. All right, let me see, let me go ahead and try and hit one here. And, all right, so we've got some basic sound effects working. Now when I hit the home button, it should tidy up and stop the music, and we're good to go. If you have any questions about creating sound, please let me know. We'll look at some of the open source tools in class and we'll be creating our own sound effects so that we don't get into any legal tr trouble as we uh, begin to publish applications. So uh, thank you for watching and uh, look for further tutorials.